I've got a track day tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow, Wednesday. It's Sunday today. Um, now that the suspension's settled, I can see it's a bit... It's not really even. Um, so, between left and right. So the back we're looking at at the moment, if I go down to the rear left, I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to see, but I can basically get my hand in that far. And if we go around to the right hand side, show everyone. So, if I try and put my hand in, I can only get it to the my knuckles. I don't know what the difference is there. It's hard to judge, really. I'll try and over, try and put a ruler next to them, see if I can get a better idea. So that's the back. In regards to the front, they're both just a lot higher than what they were before. So I can. I can get my whole, like there's nothing stopping me there. That's... But I figure, I don't know, I'm probably wrong here, but as soon as I've stripped all the weight kind of out the back and the middle of the car, so does the front need to be raised up a bit to push some weight on the back to try and balance it out? I don't know, could be completely wrong there, but. No, I think that's a bit high. Um, once I can, once I've done the back ones, I'll show you the difference between the front because I can't actually get around that easy at the moment. Um, but I've, I've I've looked already. You see, I've marked it so I don't forget that this side is higher than the left hand side. I just try and drop it down so it's the same left and right. Um, I don't know, see how I get on, whether I do both, I drop both down a bit. But that rear right has definitely got to come up, because I don't want that tyre hitting the arch on the track day. So from the, the wheel arch down to the top of the rim, it's about, about seven centimetres. On the other side, it's nine and a half. So, yeah, I need to try and nice bit of rust there to fix that at some point uh, so yeah I'm going to take this side up try and take off about two and a half centimetres alright so what have I done uh, obviously taking the wheel off uh, so I measured from the base of this up to the lower lock-in ring uh, I think it was about 37 mil, um, so I'm, I need to go up about I think it's about two and a half centimeters. So I've only gone up about a third of that because I know changes to this distance equate to a lot bigger changes at the actual hub. So I'm going to give that a go. Um, it's quite an easy process. It's just the, um, the bolt that comes in from underneath this it's a bit of a pain because to get it to go in straight it kind of fouls against the, uh, the drive shaft I don't know where I can get under it's a bit tricky but you can just about see the drive shaft there so you feel like you're cross threading because it kind of feels like it's going in a bit of an angle so the best way I've found to get your hub, just get rid of this support underneath it. Um, just let it go as low as it can. Get everything in place. And I was having to physically push the um, I forget what it's called, some kind of control arm. I have to physically push it that way towards the front of the car to make sure that when I'm threading the bolt in from underneath, it's actually going in square. Um, so I just did as much as I could, finger tight, pushing this aside. 
and then I managed to get the socket on underneath or the Allen key the Allen key socket um, and then it felt like it was going smooth before when I was trying to do it it was getting to a certain point and getting like it felt like it was cross threading because it was getting really tough and it wasn't even nowhere near done up so yeah I dropped it as low as I could so you can see I wedged a, a socket in there to to keep it square to the spring and you've got a bit of play underneath you can sort of come in at an angle with that allen key bolt but yeah I had to push quite hard this control arm towards the front of the card so I can get the bolt in square so I've just um, wound the shock out probably about 12 mil. it felt like when I was jacking up the hub to get the shock back in place felt like I was putting a lot of tension on the spring so yeah, I've just wound that out a bit just to allow for the bigger gap um, or sort of higher ride height so we'll see how that looks so just load that down now it's about the same as the other one now so yeah It'll probably settle a bit and drop a bit, but it'll be nearer than what it was before. Probably get a better idea after the track day, but it's closer than what it was. So, happy days. I just got to do the front one. So, the two fronts are kind of a bit higher than I wanted, ideally, but I haven't got the time today to adjust both of them, so I just need to get the right one to match the left one. So the left one here, I can get my hand in slightly more than the rear ones. So I need to try and get the the, the, right, the front right one to match that. It's a lot higher at the moment. Um, I kind of want these slightly higher than I did before. Like, like I was saying before, where I've got less weight in the back, so I'm trying to balance it out a bit. I don't know whether I'm talking out my ass, but it's an experiment, isn't it? Um, so you can switch over to the front right. I can just show you how much bigger this one is. So before I could get to there, so now I could just get my whole arm in there. It's terrible. So I measure it up, but I'm, I reckon it's going to be about it's probably two to three centimeters. So that front right is actually 1.4 centimeters higher, so uh, quite a difference really. I suppose that goes to show if you replace the springs the way I did and undo all the locking rings and all the various bits to get them on. So yeah, might not put them back on very consistently. I suppose in an ideal world, you'd lay them both next to each other so that at least they matched up. Well, it could just be differences in the weight of the left and right side, or no, I don't know. Probably just the way I've set them up. Hopefully, this one's a bit more straightforward because the height is set by because the spring. You just give it a little bit of tension and leave it alone. Doesn't really come into affecting the height of the car. So this bit here. So you screw that in and out to obviously make the coil over longer or shorter. So where it connects to the hub there, <coughs> I should just better hopefully support the hub, undo the bolt, drop it out enough that I can unwind this bottom section of the coil over. Try and estimate how much I need to unwind it to, to get like a 1.4 centimeter drop overall, because it's going to be slightly less. So before I forget, the um, on the rear where I just did the uh, the spring seemed to make sort of three times the difference. So I think I did about 0.8 centimeters where the spring is, and it equated to sort of two to two and a half actually where the where I measure here. The alloy up to the, the arch. 
the front's not going to be quite the same ratio because what you're adjusting is a lot closer to the hub so it's going to be a bit of guesswork I guess so if I remember right what I just measured on the rear the, the rear right is about half a centimetre higher and the front right is about two millimetres higher which I'm not really fussed about but maybe I've inadvertently given myself a bit of leeway for the weight of me being in the, the driver's seat uh, probably not I think that rear right is going to have to the gap's going to have to come down a bit but I haven't got time today so we'll take it to the track day on Wednesday see how we get on I don't know, might settle a bit more just taking it for a spin try and get the suspension to settle so yeah, the front I'm quite pleased with the rear I'm a bit annoyed I'm half a centimetre out but Oh well. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.